Hi, I'm Chris Holbert, and uh, welcome to the next video in my series that follows along with the Swift Education curriculum. Today we'll be going through the first of the clock lessons. So to find this, you could go to the URL that you can see here, or you would just go to swifteducation.github.io and follow the links, follow this teaching app development link, and then scroll down and find level two, click on clock. And today we're going through lesson one. Firstly, you'll need to download the Xcode project. I've already done so. And let's open that up now. Here it is. Now, I have to right click the Xcode project, but you won't need to. This is only because I've got multiple versions of Xcode installed. Great, here's the project all open and ready to be looked at. We'll go into the left hand pane and expand all the files. Let's fire up the main storyboard. That's always a good place to start. As you can see, we've got a uh, mainly a black screen and I'll expand the views and there are no views. Here's the clock target. Let's run it and see what we get. Here we go, it's just a black screen, just as we could see in the main storyboard. Okay, firstly we're going to use Interface Builder and we're going to add a label. So back to the storyboard, let's use the object library. Now you can find the object library down here. If this panel isn't open, you can click that button there to open up the utilities area and the object library is on the bottom right. However, if you want to uh, learn the keyboard shortcuts, you will want to use Alt Command L, which I've just done and hasn't actually done anything because uh, the object library was already open. So let's search for labels and add one in. Now let's use the Attributes Inspector to change its initial text. So that's Alt Command 4. Alternatively, you can just click on this icon here, but the, command, uh, the keyboard shortcuts are good to know. And let's change the text to, to that. Now we've got this ellipsis here, so let's make it a little wider. And uh, as you can see, we've now changed the text. And now we need to set some constraints. So I'm right click dragging from the label to the view. I can center it horizontally. As you can see, there's this dotted area. That means that's where it thinks the view should go. Um, it's up the top because we've only made a horizontal centering constraint. We now need a vertical one. Let's use the pin tool for that. AKA the TIE Fighter. And let's make it uh, 60 from the top. Now we can uh, make it 60 from the top of the view or 60 from the top layout guide. The top layout guide comes just under the status bar, e.g. where the clock and the battery indicator are. Generally you want to be just under this top layout guide. changing it to 85. Fantastic. Now you can see the dotted line is here. That's where it wants to be. So we can update the frame. And there we go. Everything looks all hunky-dory. Let's run that and see how it looks. Great. As you can see, it's not quite centered. Let's fix that. Let's go to the size inspector. You can click on this icon or you can do Alt Command 5. And here's our constraints. As you can see, the top space is 60 as we entered before. The center X is minus 21. So let's fix that. The minus 21 means that it is 21 away from the actual center. So let's set that to zero, click outside. 
and it's all centered nicely now. Just to verify, I'll open it in the simulator. That looks pretty centered to me. Fantastic. Now we need to talk about view controllers and views. Views are anything that you can see on the screen, whereas a view controller is where you put all your code that handles what's going on behind the scenes. A simple way of thinking of it is views are visible and view controllers are invisible. But view controllers pull the strings of the views. So the view controllers are where your intelligence is and your views should be as dumb as possible. And the way you can connect your views and your view controllers is via outlets. So let's connect up this label to its view controller right now. Hold down Alt and click on the view controller. And now you've got uh, the storyboard and the view controller side by side. This is how you'll need things to, in order to set up uh, outlets. We'll close these side panels to make life a bit more uh, comfortable and make the uh, make Xcode full screen. All right, this is our view controller. Everything between this brace and this brace is the contents of your class. And this kind of area here is where instance variables will go. So I've gone in here and enter a few times to make a bit of space. And now you right click, drag from the view into here. And now you've got some options. Firstly, you want to connect an outlet. If that was a tappable control, like a button, for instance, you'd get the ability to make a function connection or action connection, which allows you to specify some code to run when that is tapped. But since labels don't have those kind of abilities, outlets about your only option. And we'll call it time label. Now it is a label, so the type is correct. And you generally always want them to be weak. Fantastic. Now you can see this uh, little blue circle, a uh, little circle here. This circle has a dot in the middle, which means it is correctly connected. And when you hover the mouse over it, you can see on the left how it highlights the appropriate view. Also, if we reopen the utilities on the right and go to the connections inspector, which you can view by Alt Command 6 or clicking here, you can see that this label has a referencing outlet through to the view controller called time label. So that text time label matches the name of that instance variable there. So let's go through what this line actually does. If we had, say, a line like this, this is how you declare a plain vanilla instance variable. You have var, which means this is a variable that can change. You have the name of the instance variable. You can read the colon as though it says is. So my label is a UI label. And UI label is the type. And the question mark means this can sometimes be nil. The exclamation mark here means this can sometimes be nil as well, but it is usually not nil. Really, these are just the same. They just look different. Under the hood, they're identical. And at IB Outlet is a special decoration that makes this variable eligible to be connected to Interface Builder. But as far as your code is concerned, um, this is basically meaningless. All it does is gives the interface builder interface the ability to hook that up. And weak means that the memory management uh, scheme that uh, Swift uses, aka reference counting, which I'm not going to go into here because it's quite a complex issue, but you should read about it. Basically, it means that the view controller won't keep the time label around in memory whereas the time label will be kept in memory by this view by virtue of being on screen. Now view controllers have a bunch of events that occur. One of the most common ones that we can see here is called view did load. 
Basically, a view controller can exist in memory without its view having been created yet. Now, this is common if your app starts up with a tab controller. Each, the contents of each tab will be a view controller of its own. However, to make the app start up more quickly, only the visible, app, visible tab will be loaded. All the other tabs, their view controllers will exist. However, their views won't exist until you tap that tab. So once a view controller's view is loaded, this function will call. You can think of this function as a uh, once-off that will only ever get called once for the lifetime of a single view controller instance. And it is quite handy for setting up the initial values of things. So let's, um, let's make it log something. And if I do shift command Y to open the debug area, once I run this app, I will see view did load appear down the bottom. As you can see, that worked. Okay, we're going to change the app so that in view did load it to something a bit more appropriate. Let's get rid of this logging line and let's instead set the time labels text to current time. There you go. We no longer see the zeros as per the storyboard, but we see current time, which got set in the view did load. Okay, I'll run you through what just happened here. This is a bit of swift syntax for you. Basically, it says, here's the time label instance variable, which is a UI label. When you do dot, you can access all the variables inside the time label. So one of those variables is text, but here's a bunch of other ones. We can also change the text color. Let's do that. And uh, use equals to assign a new value. Equals may be a little misleading if you don't have much of a programming background. It doesn't mean compare or is equal to, it means assign or move the value from the right into the bucket on the left. So let's create a new color. And what we have here is what's called a string literal. Basically anything between these double quotes is a bit of text that we can assign to anything that needs a string type. So if I hold out Alt and click on text, text expects to be given a string. A string is just text. So that's a string, we assign it into text and it, everything's happy. So let's see what happens when we run that. Now it's orange. Fantastic. So in closing, uh, obviously we won't want it to show the literal string at the current time. We will want it to show, you know, 1252, for instance, because that's the time right now. Now, how will we do that? Basically, what we'll have to do in the future lesson is go through here and instead of showing the current time, we'll have to uh, figure out the actual time and put it in here. We'll get to that in the next few lessons. Thanks for watching.